This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 1218 of Horse Tip Daily, your almost everyday morsel of helpful hints, useful facts, and practical techniques for horse folks. Brought to you today by bedinabox.com. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today, Lynn Palm, along with Dressage Radio Show co-hosts Reese and Philip, have some helpful advice on developing collection for Western dressage or traditional dressage, as well as the importance of letting a horse make mistakes. And we'll get right to our tip after this from BedInABox.com. Welcome to BedInABox.com, where you'll find the most comfortable, pressure-relieving memory foam mattress at only one-third the cost of the leading brands. We have created an exclusive memory foam that sleeps cooler, rebounds quicker, and cradles your body in pain-relieving comfort better than other types of memory foams. Introducing our new memory foam technology. By swirl-infusing gel into our advanced memory foam, we have created an even cooler, more comfortable sleeping surface. Best of all, it's made right here in the USA. He had been dealing with back pain and chiropractor visits for a while, so we decided it was probably time to find a new mattress. So we started doing some research on memory foam mattresses and found bendabox.com. We were on a trip with some friends and they actually had a bed in a box mattress in their camper. And on their recommendation, we decided to get one for ourselves. They got it to us in no time. We had no problem adjusting and we were thrilled with the comfort. In fact, my husband doesn't have to get up early anymore due to back pain. He can lie in bed for as long as he likes without any discomfort. We recommend Bed in a Box to anyone who has back problems or just needs a good night's rest. We believe we have created the world's best memory foam mattress. Using independent accredited labs, we have tested our mattresses against the industry leaders to ensure comfort and durability. Test results show our mattresses relieve pressure better than the more expensive ones found in retail stores. Buying a mattress over the internet may seem risky. That's why we offer a 120-day zero-risk return policy. You get a full 100% refund if you're not satisfied. No hidden fees and no return shipping charges, and we back them with a 20-year warranty. Sound too good to be true? Don't take our word for it. Read what real customers are writing about us on Facebook, Twitter, Viewpoints.com, and other third-party review sites. We are dedicated to quality and service. We offer fast, free shipping to the contiguous U.S. Your mattress will arrive conveniently packaged and will be ready to sleep on within minutes. With the benefits of the leading brand mattresses, but at one-third the cost, why wait? Start getting the best sleep of your life. Call, chat, or email one of our friendly customer care agents to learn why 99% of our customers sleep better and toss and turn less on their new bed-in-a-box mattress. How about for this this uh, week's total saddle fit tip of the week? Can yep. you go go with us and talk to us a little bit about your stages of collection and, and a little bit about you know how what you go through in the book because it's fantastic. Okay, well, first um, the, you know the the main thing is is being able to um, know your horse, understand your horse, whatever level it's at. And to have um, obedience and manners and response and command with your horse on the ground. I do that from either working in hand, lunging, lunging bidding, long lining. And why those those things are very important, one, it's uh, a variety that you can do with training your horse, but it's also you're on the ground, you've got your eyes to visually see how your horse is developing or where he's at or new goals that you're going to advance him toward and when. So those are all important parts of the training and evaluation of your horse. But then the biggest part of the book is I also, people don't know what natural self-carriage is. And I loved one time when I saw Reimer Klimke give a lecture saying that they never start their horses at least until three years old. They're in a pasture growing up and yada, yada. But when they do, their first year under saddle is only riding with loose reins and letting them learn natural self-carriage. Same thing I do. Excellent. They learn to carry my weight. I guide them. They know how to guide with my reins because of the ground training, but guide with legs and feet and just 
let them learn to carry themselves. Lynn, I just want to talk about that a minute because I think that's such an important yeah. thing is because, yeah. you know, a lot of riders when they're starting horses, um, you know, they, ha- they have all the tools there. But I think in the beginning, you have to just sort of let the horse be and let them make mistakes because I think Absolutely. in the beginning, if you spend your whole time sort of pack- packaging the horse together, they don't yeah. really get a sense of, you know, moving on their own. And what Absolutely. happens when they put a little bit too much weight on the, you know, on the inside uh, front leg or something and, and they Absolutely. stumble or they fall a little bit. But I think that's yeah. all part of the horse learning for himself what to do so that, you know, when you start to actually do real collection, that the horse, that the rider doesn't have to do, you know, too much and overdo it. And then, you know, and then and then you physically can't get strong enough to actually do real collection when we're talking about PF passage pirouettes, you know. So, like I said, it starts at three years old, so you don't have to go back and redo all of that work all over again. Right. Let the horse go too fast sometimes or... You know, sometimes they get a little too slow. They have to figure out that that's not great for them in the end anyways. And the rider Absolutely. just has to get out of the way. I, I think that's a really important point, you know, as far as, you know, when uh, when I start horses in my program. So Absolutely. Yep. And, it, and, it, and each horse has a different timeline. You do the same kinds of things. But uh, I don't think people enough allow that time for natural self-carriage. And it's their first development. Some horses, it takes 10 months to a year. Some horses, it's till the next year and a half. But it's, it's time that I do things so simple, but I just let them learn to carry themselves. And then I start to train them. Yeah. No, you know, then yeah. I start to do gradually yeah. with the baby steps of them starting to learn more controlled transitions and self-carriage and straightness and lateral movement. And, you know, you bring them along as you do in that first level to then as the levels take them up. Then the horse gets stronger, and really the horse collects himself. I never teach him or compact him, as you say, yeah. to get him to collect. Yeah, the sure. development of the horse, they collect on their own and what you're doing with them and then getting stronger in their, in their body and their self-carriage. And that's the – I think you're just right on with – it takes time. Yes. You know, I can't go to the gym. If I were to start to go to the gym tomorrow, it's yep. going to take me six months or so to really get into training shape for, I, you know, whatever I want to do, run a marathon or yes. I don't know. Or, I yeah, or before you add the next thing, right? You have to right. sort before of start at a base and, and work from there, mm-hmm. right? And, Absolutely. And I think you've got to think the same with horses. You know, it, yep. it really takes – time and and it, yep. and it it and it, I just literally had a lesson right before I came in with a horse that has come in for training and she's been in now 2 months and uh-huh. I wish it's a young rider and I wish we had taken a picture of the horse when the first day sure. day 30 day 60 yeah. you know the horse herself it's a mare she looks completely different even in her body and we yep. literally had the same discussion and that is you know sure. over it's a younger horse it takes time. Her sure. muscles aren't used to it. Her body's sure. used to it. Sure. And so, and, and I loved how you said every horse is on their yeah. own timeline. This Absolutely. is like every human. <laughs> Without, you know? And that's why I go back to the ground a lot because then I get to use my eye. Of course, you can feel, you can have a ground person when you're training and developing yeah. the horse and or rider. But if it's yourself training, you know, which we, even our students, we want them to ride on their own. But mm. that's why I always still have make them come back to a part of it where you put your eye on the ground and you get to see your own horse and how he's doing what you're asking him to do. That's why the dressage riders love mirrors so much. Yeah. It's not, it's not to check the makeup every day, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have mirrors, but yeah. I do go back yeah. to the ground for the same reason. Yes, that's right. Well, videoing, I mean, I think we have a lot of different tools mm-hmm. uh, now that we didn't have or, or you know, that, that are easy. You know, somebody can take a video on your phone. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, your husband, my husband's great at that. Like, hey, honey, I need you for five minutes. And boom, he can sure. take a video and yep. I can see it right away. And and I think that's, that's the deal with collection. Collection, sure. you know, you read the scale of training in any discipline and you think, oh, well, that sounds pretty easy. No, yep. it takes a really long time. Mm-hmm. And no, you- yeah, Lynn, Lynn, the thing I saw was a little bit interesting. Maybe we want to go into that. Um, we've got a few minutes here. It's just uh, on social media, we, we saw sort of, um, you know, a description of how a person can sort of feel the collection. Do you know what, you want, do you know what I'm talking about? With their um, body. W- it's a picture. You're helping a young lady. Um, yeah. On the ground. So can you kind of go through that with us a little bit? 
And and I'm sorry, I didn't understand fully your your question. Oh, we just I just thought there were some tips that we saw that a person can imitate collection with their own body. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, um, you know, um, I was at a wonderful clinic in Texas. I can't remember uh, who was. It was a German man that was teaching that was in the United States for a long time, and he did this demonstration with a person where they could literally have an idea to understand the biomechanics of how a horse collects. And I've done this so many times, and especially, again, with people that don't understand or where I'm seeing more people that think that they're collecting their horse, but they're riding too much from front to back, and the horse is totally on the forehand. And you, you, you simply, and I've done this so many times, put a person, they got to be the horse on the ground. Their hands are the horse's front legs, and the knees are the horse's back legs. And the great tip of somebody who can do this after, uh, and as I'm explaining it, it's very easy to do. You get your hands right underneath your shoulders and your knees right underneath your hips. Now, as you are there on the ground, make sure you've got a rug because you, you don't want your knees to start hurting. <laughs> you're going to already put your head upward in a comfortable position. So in other words, your head's like the pole of the horse. Okay. The second you put your head down, you're going to immediately feel more weight on your hands. Okay? Makes so, sense. Get yep. back in that I'm, position. I'm it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and you want to feel as much evenness of weight on your hands as your knees. But at the same token, you have to be able to say, where's the more weight on your hands or your knees? It's always the hands because of the weight of your head and neck, just like the horse. Yeah. So as we... The horse develops and collects. You have to get in an uphill balance, of course, bearing more weight behind, engaging more of the hind legs underneath to lighten the forehand. So you tuck your knees underneath your belly, and you're going to find that there's less weight on the front legs. Well, actually, i got to back up just for a second. In both those positions, you say, let's go ahead and make a canter depart. So you lift your hands up off the ground, and, boy, you can do it easy. In the first one, which is the self-carriage, the second one, you bring your knees underneath your body in that uphill balance, and wow, now they can really lift their hands up off the ground and do a canter depart. Well, that's why a horse can do a higher jump. That's why a horse can turn faster around a barrel. That's why a horse can do tempi lead changes and carry their parallettes and passage and piaf. But I said, now let's do what... Most of the people think collection is by pulling their head in and head setting. Well, when that happens, now you've got to draw your knees behind your hips. Makes sense. And get them back behind your hips. Now let's put that head down because that's what the horse is going to do when you ride too much from your hands, seesaw and head set. Now let's try to do that canter depart. They cannot lift can't the front hand yeah, off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And they're yeah. saying, I can't. I said, what you say? And I said, yeah. you're saying I can't do it. I said, well, that's what your horse is saying. Yeah, yes. there you go. It's so true. And yeah, that was kind of cool. It's example. It's really cool. And the pictures are great. And you can really see, actually, too, when the rider has yep. to tuck their knees under, they have to tuck their bum under, too. You yes, to and that's exactly the horse does the same <laughs> thing with his hip. Yeah, yep. exactly. You've got to tuck your bum. you got to tuck your hip. Um, yep. So, so a, that, really that's cool. the, that's a, an excellent example for the people that we get, and there's so much still in the Western world, they think that a headset is collection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, as you right. collect the horse over time in the body and the horse is able to get that muscle out behind the jaw, they can flex at the pole and they're going to have a headset. and You're going to have a, a connection to it without setting the head. It comes in time. Well, Lynn, you have been awesome tonight. We have learned so much, and thank you so much. You really spent a lot of time with us, and I really appreciate it. And um, I hope our listeners will take advantage. We can get questions to Lynn uh, and, and answer them here on the show about Western dressage. She's been so gracious to come on. And, Lynn, how would our listeners find you online if they have any more questions? Oh, if they do, they can go to my website, uh, lynnpalm.com. Um, of course, we've got uh, the Facebook and all the social media the same thing, just my name, Lynn Palm, you can find it. And, uh, yeah, if somebody's got questions right on our website, you can um, ask us and we get uh, questions. And I'd be more than happy to um, answer any questions that people have. And, and really, the, 
the best part of it all is is if if I have a chance, just like I know both of you, if you can give back to somebody and make their horse happier, that's what that's our jobs as professionals. You got it. You got <laughs> Absolutely. it. Thank you, Lynn. We'll talk to you soon. I can't wait. <laughs> Well, there you have it. You can find links to today's guests as well as lots more tips at horsetipdaily.com. This podcast was made possible through the generous support of bednabox.com and listeners like you. Learn how you can help support Horse Radio Network programming and qualify for auditors-only perks at horsetipdaily.com. Click on the Become an Auditor banner in the center of the page. This is Coach Jen, and I'll be back again soon with another tip. So until then, go ride your horse! The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.